On Turtles All the Way Down, we ask some pretty big questions and try not to shy away from facing them head on. Admittedly, being such deep and controversial questions, we also don't have all the answers. Some may not even be answerable. We enjoy exploring them and laying out the current ideas and possible explanations for them. It's time we explore time itself. What in the universe is this strange thing called time? Is it something fundamentally embedded within the universe? Is it an illusion? Does it flow past us or do we move with it? These are some of the concepts that we'll be discussing in this video. Time is a very curious concept. Let me say from the outset that science has not yet determined its true fundamental nature, and I can't do much justice in elaborating on all of its many facets in this short video. I will, however, attempt to highlight some of time's bizarre qualities and some possible explanations. Two of my previous videos discussed the possibility of time travel to the future and to the past. Check them out here and here. Now, we all experience time. There's movement in the world. Stuff changes. Interactions happen and cause and effect are intimately tied to it. We seem to be immersed within this mysterious thing called time. It surrounds us and flows through us. It is an invisible phenomenon, but one that gives animation to the world. Without it, the universe would cease to move and would be a static object. So we can tentatively say that time is that phenomenon of nature that provides change. Most scientists and philosophers from antiquity to the early 1900s had viewed time as simply a kind of constant background stage that the rest of the universe evolved within. Time, it was believed, was a completely separate thing of existence that objects in the universe flowed through. It remained an absolute constant in nature that could not be manipulated in any way. It was something that could be measured by clocks. This view radically changed when Albert Einstein revolutionized physics in 1915 with his general theory of relativity. Einstein and others began fusing time and space together in an unbreakable union called space-time. No longer were these characters of the universe distinct concepts, but a single entity. What's more, Einstein's general theory showed that space-time was a malleable thing that could be squeezed and pulled. The stuff of the universe that could manipulate this space-time substance, according to Einstein, was matter and energy. In other words, collect enough matter or energy together, say to make a star, and the space-time around it begins to warp or flex. It is this warping of the surrounding space-time that is gravity. General relativity says that gravity is not at all something that we can think of as a traditional force, like a magnet invisibly pulling on iron, but is instead a bending of this invisible space-time stuff around matter. Objects nearby simply fall along the bend toward the matter. That's gravity. But what does any of this have to do with time? Time is one of those things that make up space-time. Think of what we mean by just space itself. We know it consists of three dimensions. Let's lay that out. Imagine a single line that extends indefinitely, both left and right. You can only move left or right or any combination of the two on this line. That is one dimension. Now extend that line 90 degrees or right angles to it. What do you get? A two-dimensional flat sheet. Now you can go left and right, but also up and down or any combination of these. You are now moving in two dimensions. But we live in a three-dimensional space. Going back to our two-dimensional sheet, to create a three-dimensional space, we extend the sheet 90 degrees perpendicular, or at right angles to it. This creates our space. Finally, we can move in this space in any combination of left, right, up, down, inward, and outward. 
However, and this is the key to fully understanding the concept of Einstein's general theory of relativity, time is now added to this three-dimensional space as a fourth dimension. How do we do that? The same way we did with the others. Move the three-dimensional space at right angles to itself, and that becomes the fourth time dimension. Now, admittedly, this is impossible to fully visualize on paper, or even in this video. But what helps is simply removing one or two of these spatial dimensions and adding in the time dimension. There. Now, just as we can move left or right or up and down in space, we can go backward and forward in time. With one very important exception, time is now thought of as just another dimension you can move through, like space. What is that one exception? As far as we scientifically know, you can only move in one direction in time, from the back, the past, toward the front, the future. However, in space dimensions, you're free to move about the cabin. As was mentioned previously in general relativity, all of this four-dimensional space-time stuff is a malleable kind of substance that permeates and makes up the universe. It is possible to squeeze and stretch it like rubber. Yes, even the time component of space-time is stretchable. How stuff moves within space-time depends on how much compression and extension it has. Okay, so the concept of time being an extra fourth dimension tied to space may or may not be too difficult to wrap your brains around, and physicists utilize this idea all the time. It is essentially how we view the universe as really being constructed. However, this still leaves open the question of what distinguishes the past from the present from the future. We all experience our present to consist of what really exists right here and right now. This table I'm sitting next to and the chair I'm sitting on both exist in the present because I can experience them here and now. But when I remember the coffee I sipped an hour ago, I know that it existed in my past. How do I know it was in my past? Because I no longer experience it now other than in my memory, and I do remember experiencing it. When I now imagine the time when I'll be viewing this video fully completed, I know that it may be in my future. Why do I think it will be in my future and not, say, in my past? Because I have no knowledge of ever experiencing it, but yet I can visualize it happening. So from our experiencing perspectives, Memories, or records, are what defines our pasts. A current experience, or event, is what defines the present. An unexperienced or unrecorded possibility is what defines the future. For conscious beings, such as us, time only moves from past to present to future, and never the other way around. Now, we'll need to temporarily move into the twilight time zone between science and philosophy. What does it mean to say that something exists? Ontologically, something can exist only if it can be physically interacted with or experienced. Do flying pigs exist? No. Why not? Because we cannot experience them physically in any way. Yes, we can imagine them, but that is very different than existence. Does this chair I sit on exist? Yes, it can be physically experienced or interacted with. It exists. And what about that supernova that will definitely explode in our future? Does that exist? Or a dinosaur that walked in our past? Does it exist? In both of these cases, they will or have been experienced. This is where different ontological or philosophical views of time come in. Those who say that only currently experienced things exist, but not those from the past nor those from the future, are called presentists. 
Presentism is the belief that only the present exists. The past has already happened, but no longer exists. The future has not yet happened and likewise does not exist. This is all of our intuitive feelings. Presentism is what we all feel and have adapted to. Imagine presentism as a single slice in a block of infinitely thin slices that is constantly moving forward through the block, but in only one direction, from past to future. Presentism says that only that lit up thin slice is all that exists. The second ontological view of time is called the growing block view. This states that not only is that single slice of the present real, but the previously moved through block from the past is also real. So the past and the present exists in the growing block universe view. The future does not. However, in Einstein's general relativity, we cannot, even in principle, distinguish past from present from future. There are no absolutes in time, nor any preferred point in time. In other words, in relativity, there is the block universe. This view is also called eternalism. The entire past, present, and future history of the universe exists. The majority of physicists subscribe to the eternalist view of time. All of time exists. Things from our past do not spontaneously pop out of existence when the present passes them, and future events do not just pop into existence at the moment the present hits them. These all exist and are real. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly for us conscious beings, is the question of the feeling of the flow of time. How is it that if indeed eternalism is true, and all of time exists, that we feel as if the present has a privileged position in time, and we have a sense of movement through it? Remember, in eternalism the present exists, but so does the past and the future. So why is it that we only experience the present and not the past or the future? To me, this is the greatest question about time and one that is the most perplexing. But there is a developing answer provided by biology and brain functioning. Importantly and astonishingly, in the eternalist view, the flow of time is actually an illusion there is no flow to time. All of existence is static in a timeless sense. The feeling of flowing through time may come from how our brains use present interactions with our memories and our immediate anticipations of a future event. Also, our sense of duration seems to be tied to pulsing and sequential firings of neurons in certain brain regions Complex networks of these timekeeping neurons, along with working memory and more long-term memories, give us the sensation of motion and movement through time. Each slice in time has a slightly different set of these interactions between memories, present experiences, and anticipations. When these snapshots are sequenced immediately next to each other, there emerges a sense of time flow, but the sense is an illusion nonetheless. Think about that for a moment. What we are saying is that motion and flow through time are both complete illusions. Both neuroscience and physics, and to a certain extent philosophy as well, point toward and bolster this mind-bending truth. If this is how the mind and time really do work, I can think of few other ideas in science that could be so shocking and earth-shaking. This video has extended a little too much in time than I had originally anticipated. Even though there was so much to speak about or to elucidate further within this rich topic of time, 
There is so much more to explore in this fascinating realm. We've only explored the tip of the iceberg. I have previously explored the concepts of time travel, both to our past and into our future in these videos. Check them out. Thanks for staying with turtles all the way down. I really hope you've enjoyed the ride so far. Support this channel by subscribing, watching the videos, and you're clicking those likes. I really appreciate it. Until next video, stay safe and bye for now.